Hey, what's up? It's Vince here. We're back on part 3 of this uh, Midnight Club 3 Let's Play. We've upgraded the Monte Carlo and are continuing to do more races in the game. I hope you're strong enough to control something with that much power. Not very much on the contrary. On the contrary is what I meant to say is that the car doesn't have a lot. Because it only has level 1 upgrades and I need to find a way to unlock level 2 upgrades. And we're going to be able to do that with a C-Class muscle car and we got to save up a little bit for that later on in the game. Because the Monte Carlo is limited in its ability being a Class D car. Or as a Class D car is a higher, a higher baseline in terms of stats. And a higher threshold in terms of how much power and handling and acceleration. Or the three stats are top speed acceleration and handling it will have a bigger threshold to put into it it's already upgrades so we need to get ourselves a class C car and uh, be able to unlock those level 2 upgrades and we get them from the muscle cars tournament which is as was said by uh, the, one of the mechanics Oscar that you do these races and you learn the, the tricks of the of it, which essentially means prizes and upgrades and all the rest of the aftermarket accessories and body mods and stuff like that. Here we did like a front and rear bumper mods to make them look like an 81 Monte Carlo or a 1980 Monte Carlo, which is one of the later years where they did um, jewel headlights. Some of the deferral mandates in the late 70s and early 80s changed to allow manufacturers to use square headlights. And people went crazy with them in the 1980s and the rest of the styling is very square and boxy with this late 70s and 1980s. All the way up until the early 90s in some cars. Some cars in the mid 80s then went to round due to Advance in computer science and CAD and aerodynamics and stuff like that. Whatever is trendy changes constantly. Even more so now, it's on a day by day basis, it seems like. Today's different than the yesterday, and yesterday feels like a, even a day where you were even stupider, so to speak. Because there's so much more information that we're exposed to as opposed to back then. Seems like it's like a brainwave of information thanks to the internet. And it's very confusing too, in, in a way, because you get a lot of opinions, and sometimes those opinions are wrong, or a lot of times those opinions are wrong depending on the subject, and you gotta try and fact check it. If you want to read something, it's got to be published from a library. That way you know it's uh, factual information. Hey man, I got some new stock in. Come by whenever you want me to hook you up. I mean, sometimes form stuff is right in terms of techniques or fixing stuff, but it's also like... Uh, a chance state shot in the dark pretty much because it could be right it could be wrong especially when it comes to auto body paint like when you're mixing colors people like like to mix brands and stuff like that instead of sticking with one brand but whatever gets you the same result I guess is the main moral out of this so here we're moving on to the second race of the Muscle Car Championship, which is going to give us Muscle Car upgrades and special abilities. So we're um, 
Moving on. We're still going against level one cars, though. That Dodge Charger is a Class C car, but we ain't cranked up yet in terms of our banding. When you know that everyone's ahead of you, it's you gotta rack up the money and do those optional races and get those extra cars, which is what stalemates the game. In fact, I got so sidetracked doing those optional races to buy every single car, I forgot to do the tournaments. This is when I had the game when I was probably in elementary school. Can't remember exactly, but I think it was around that time. So you would get sidetracked in the getting the money to buy a car that you just that I just went crazy and bought everything I can off of optional races with the cars that were uh, in the game. The car is very neutral handling this Monte Carlo, however it's very loose uh, once the traction breaks and it's a bit of a struggle to get out of the slide and have to let off the throttle and lose speed which is something that I don't want to do. What yet? Whereas in other games like Forza, Gran Turismo, or any other similar game, you can be on the throttle, correct it, maybe let off a little bit, and get the traction back on the wheels, on the tires. I mean, however, it's not the same. Whereas here, the car just keeps on sliding, like it's in a fixed mode or something. And that's very true with the muscle cars, however, the tuna cars don't really suffer from that. Look at that! Now this guy's got style! Man, his flavor is something! Now this is, Oscar's quotes are different because we're doing this particular tournament and he's supposed to be the head person in charge of it. So he's like... He's representing and instead of being like in supportive quotes or being like, You could do it, you could do it, he's like, oh, this guy's coming in. I got respect for him or something like that. Whereas at our optional race close, he's like, You got you learned that from me. You couldn't be anywhere without me. Some type of stuff like that. Now this race, I think that we get stuck on it and have to abandon because now we're outgunned. And I decided to show this being that I didn't edit it out. But you see that they're now in all Pontiac GTO judges and other crazy stuff that's way beyond uh, my Monte Carlo. You have to do a lot more to a Monte Carlo in real life, in retrospect, to have it be able to keep up with a 60s muscle car such as a GTO judge. Where's these older motors? Pre-oil crisis, pre-emissions, pre-cafe standards, pre-carb and smog and all those federal regulations that were out there. Cars were unrestricted. They ran higher compression, they ran leaded fuels, higher octane in the gas, the gas is better. It's not healthy, but it was or it's very poisonous if exposed to it because it's put lead in gasoline. However, that's what people, gas is cheap. And the people who was uh, was having to refine from the Middle East, which is on the largest reserves, decided to uh, change their mind. And the politics have a lot to do with it being Islam and Christianity don't go hand in hand, really. So, we have the gasoline prices being at two or three dollars a gallon now and sometimes at five six dollars a gallon even more so if you live in a European country where they charge by the liter which is like a sort of bottle amount that's less than a gallon and they have no retro reserves in Europe from what I know of or very little from what they're saying, now they have to have everything exported, whereas the United States has its own reserve. We stand on it for use, but we also want to export it from the larger areas that have it, instead of using our own, because in cases of emergency or invasion, you got to have your own in order to survive. 
as a country. So anyway, this brings me back to you have to do a lot more to a G body car to compete with an A body car. You need to change cylinder heads, bump up the compression, swap in the cray motor or do whatever. Remove all the emissions equipment, the catalog converter. Uh, probably need a notch, cut out the transmission tunnel and weld in new sheet metal to fit in the bigger transmission. Like a turbo 400 for example, or a 5 or 6 speed gearbox. Plus big blocks don't really fit well in G-bodies. Well they fit, but the top doesn't fit if you want to do high rise intake manifolds or anything else of that matter or nature. You either have to have a scoop or uh, use the low rise intake manifold and it will fit underneath the hood or lower motor mounts in order to make it work. But here we're going to try again. Because I know that the car doesn't accelerate that fast but once I'm at top speed I can reel them in which is what I thought I was trying to get away with here. Uh, on these multiple attempts. Because once I'm coasting at 150, the, the other opponents are not quite doing that speed or they're hitting that stuff and it takes some time to get back up. But if I'm able to do 125, 150 miles an hour consistently throughout the entire race, then I might have a shot of winning. However, that's my only shot of winning the race. Whereas these muscle cars, when they crash, that I'm going up against, can regain their speed a lot faster because they have better acceleration and thus in real life more power, more power potential like 500, 600 horsepower out of the Pontiac 400 slash 455 cubic inch motor without going too crazy on the uh, on the boost or having boost or nitrous I mean they're 500, 550 horsepower motors easily when the top end is uh, upgraded and you uh, if you want to do the bomb end the short block as they call it you can redo that with higher compression stuff to gain more power but a lot of stuff in the factory is forged in these performance vehicles from General Motors it all depends on the casting on the block and doing a sound test, hitting with a hammer and how it rings, you can tell where something's cast or forge. If it feels more solid in the way it rings. It's something that needs to be explained in a video of its own, but that's fine. We'll get to it eventually. I meant to compete against uh, Vanessa and do the championship because that's one of the first three you gotta do. Well, it drew me into the muscle car tournament. I thought I was pressing circle and competing against the uh, Vanessa uh, driver, and that turned out to not be the case. You better look out, man. Yes. We better look out because we're going against a bear handling car and we're in a car that can only accelerate and can't break and turn, so it's just what you get when you compare the muscle versus tuna cars. The tuna cars are handling a lot better. Stiffer chassis and more taut suspension. And better tires from the factory, however. When you do the upgrades on a muscle car, they should be equivalent or even better. Because they make stiffer springs and stuff like that for A body, G body, doesn't matter what you have, or something custom made for cars that aren't supported in the aftermarket. Like any full size Fords, Mopars, they're kind of obscure. C bodies or you know, those uh, full size Fords.
if you want the car to handle it. Now here we gotta compete and um, get to the front and try to use the top speed we have to get to the top of the race and hold our speed. When you make an aggressive turn, you can jump off that 175 from the speed boost. This jump is always risky. It's very risky in a uh, C-class car or D-class car, which is what I'm in, because you're barely going fast enough to make the jump. You have to be going full throttle to make the jump. I couldn't even make the jump when the car was stock. It's ridiculous. Oscar really going crazy on that one, even though it was probably the most simplest race you could do. I haven't heard that quote in a while. This one I got stuck on, so I edited it and changed it. It was a good 70 minutes of uh, trying to make the car go fast enough through the technical section, which you'll see at the end of this particular race. Beginning's fine, it's similar to the first race that we did, as you saw. However, at the end, you have to go around uh, gas tanks, war tanks, or oil tanks. It's not a water tower, so it's either gas or oil that's being stored in those giant drums. Whatever it is, it's an obstacle, and we have to turn around it at the end of this race. So the beginning's kind of irrelevant. The back, the end of the race is very crucial. Using the opponents as human shields if you can, get in front of them. That way the cop will go after them. Because they're just trying to go after the nearest opponent. And whenever you're in the vicinity, they'll turn right into you or follow you very closely. They can get aggressive and take out the race. It's different every time you do the race. Like the probability changes. Kind of like in the Smuggler's Run Let's Play. Or the Smuggler's Run game. Or even earlier Rockstar games where they just have very malicious AI that will attack, the, attack you. Essentially, no mercy. Now here we're coming up to the end of the race. That's my homie. Yeah, as you saw those other drums, every, there's like five different ways to go around those. And it's a real pain to get through. This is the last race on this particular uh, tournament to unlock the Tuner Championship, which is essentially what this Vanessa race is. It's kind of unwritten. But that's what progresses the game is unlocking. Compete against uh, Hookmen, as they call them in the early Mineral Club games Hookmen, Hookwoman. And then that will unlock the next set of Hookmen in the game, but this time it just unlocks championships for the type of vehicle that you're in and all the upgrades and all the special abilities and all the performance and all the extra sets of cars that are in later brackets of classes in the game. So it kind of goes from that original Midnight Club style of just racing individual street racers into something that's more like Midnight uh, Need for Speed Underground just doing races and tournaments and stuff like that.
This game had just as much customization as Underground, and in some cases even more. With advantages being hydraulics, chop tops, air ride suspension, a whole unique set of rims, a whole unique set of cars that weren't all tuner cars. It's just more variety in motorcycles as well. There's just more variety in a bigger feel in this game than there is in the EA counterpart. More wheels to damage than the Underground series as well. I mean, I, I think you would scrape the size of it, but you wouldn't push in the fenders and uh, break the hood and trunk if you rack up, bang up the car too much. Now here at the end is a pain. We get through it by getting through the parking garage and we gotta get through it at the right angle. However, when you're doing the race multiple times and you have different results, or the AI doing different rubber banding or not rubber banding, or to get in the way, or to share the car positions move, however, some things are scripted in the races. Some things will occur again and some things will not. A particular consistent example is the stunt jumps. Here we're going to try to come up to the end again. Oh, we're going to fail. I don't remember how many times I've failed this race. But in future videos, expect... Um, expect more cut down on the trial and error, because now we're in the, the beat of the game. Where you have a lot more failure than success. That's why a lot of people bail on Midnight Club Let's Plays. Or they only show the beginning or they only show their car collections. Because I remember playing this game 15 years ago. Before it was 10 years ago and now it's 15 now. 15 years ago I remember doing the same race in one day over and over and over again just to move on and it's gonna be a lot of data built up in my computer that I gotta have to delete after but it's all for the channel people seem to like this game it's all for good I'll show you how to get you the game, and that's what we're doing here with the Let's Play. Yeah, we'll talk about different things along the way. We still can't get the ending right. It was just so ever slightly off on that last jump back there. But we're going to try again. So hopefully this is the last time we have to do this. We'll cut down on the next episode. Because a lot more edits have to be made on the mistakes I make or the failures that we gotta gloss over. Because we really just need to get to the uh, the full the point of the series, really. And that's to move forward on it. Like I say, initially, like I want to leave in the airs, but at the same time, I want to push forward. So we gotta come around, get to the parking garage, and come out the other side and yell and jump without hitting the buildings. 
That's a tough order in a car that doesn't handle. But there we go, we do it anyway, so like, comment, subscribe for more content. Let's hey, I got a new shipment in. You might want to come by and check this stuff out. Yeah, so like, comment, subscribe for more content. We'll see you in the next episode of Midnight Club Dre. Expect more videos as well. Uh, probably Gran Turismo related or some finance automotive. We'll see you in the next one. Those tuner kids think you can drive okay. They invited you to take part in the unbeatable Street Racers private club competition. All you gotta do is turn up in a tuner and keep impressing the kids. I know, I know, why bother? But apart from all the fetter you're gonna be lifting off these fools, those vatos got some firme skills. Maybe they can teach you something. Anyway, do what you like. I'm just giving you some advice.